Good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to the Village Board of Trustees. It is December 17th, 2012, uh, and I would like to acknowledge uh, Troop 32, who is going to present, uh, who will be presenting the colors this evening and lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, we all want to welcome uh, Dylan Pedersen, Graham Pedersen, John McHugh, Ian Hayter, Mike Swingenbeck, uh, Ryan Jones, Jack Jones, and Cole uh, Strobe. Uh, they're accompanied by their leaders, Chris Strobe and Jessica Peterson. Gentlemen. May the audience please rise. Color Guard attention. Color Guard forward march. Hold. Color Guard post colors. Salute. May you please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Two. <coughs> Call God return to rank. About face. Four in March. Oh, color are dismissed. You may now be seated. Let's thank these gentlemen uh, for giving us the. <laughs> I must share with you, uh, Troop Thirty Two um, has probably uh, produced more Eagle Scouts than most. Um, it's an incredible group of leaders. Uh, I've um, attended many of their Eagle Scout ceremonies and uh, it's very nice to see these young men and I, I, I would guess that a few of them are, are going to uh, reach that, uh, that level as well. Um, with, with that, um, before going on as we just recited the Pledge of Allegiance together, our, our nation has um, had a rough couple of days to try to understand the horrible, tragic um, loss of life in Newtown, Connecticut. Um, the governor has made comments, a lot of politicians, but it's those families that have lost loved ones, um, young first graders, teachers, a place where we've always felt were safe places. So if we could observe a moment of silence for um, their loss, I think would be appropriate. Thank you. Um, it's hard to understand, but I hopefully um, we will find ways to um, prevent these tragic events that we seem to have throughout our country. Uh, if I would ask now if we could call the roll. Trustee Hayes. Here. Trustee Rosenberg. Here. Trustee Scaletta. Here. Trustee Cedor. Here. Trustee Blackwood. Here. Trustee Breyer. Here. Trustee Farwell. Here. Trustee Glasgow. Here. President Mulder. Here. Uh, we now um, go to our agenda. For those who are in the audience, um, if you wish to address the Village Board this evening, there are um, blue cards at the back table. We ask that you complete them with your name and address uh, and then bring them up to the clerk's office and they will get up here to us uh, and indicate the item in which you wish to address. If, it isn't, if it's something that's not on the agenda, you would be coming under uh, Citizens to be Heard. Um, there's also copies of the agenda 
um, that uh, you can follow along with, with the meeting. Um, first item, we're down to item four on page one, uh, approval of minutes. Uh, are there any comments, corrections, deletions, or additions for our minutes of our December 3rd meeting? Move approval. approval. Uh, motion Second. by Trustee Farwell, seconded by Trustee Cedor. Uh, any other comments? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Motion carries. We now move to the accounts payable dated December 15th. I'd call on Trustee Hayes. Thank you, Madam President. I would move approval of the payables dated December 15th, 2012 in the amount of $1,099,818.77. Second. Uh, motion by Trustee Hayes, seconded by your Trustee Farwell. Any comments from trustees? Seeing none, anyone in the audience? Seeing none, roll call, please. Trustee Hayes? Yes. Trustee Farwell? Yes. Trustee Glasgow? Yes. Trustee Rosenberg? Yes. Trustee Scaletta? Yes. Trustee Cedar? Yes. Trustee Blackwood? Yes. Trustee Breyer? Yes. President Mulder? Yes. Motion carries. Um, we have no rec recognitions this evening or public hearings. Uh, citizens to be heard. I did not get any cards. Um, could you please bring them up? Um, I, sh I should say, um, for those who might be here um, for one of our agenda items, that um, was the reviewed, review done by Plan Commission minutes. Uh, the statements that you made there um, have all been provided for uh, the trustees, and um, there would be no need to repeat them because we've read them. They are part of our record. Um, but you're certainly welcome to speak, and that would be at the time that agenda item. This is for people who want to address the village board on an item that is not on our agenda. Does anyone have a blue card for that? Um, seeing none, um, and just just to give you a heads up, um, if you're making notes for what you want to say, we do limit your remarks uh, in respect to time. Um, and fairness to everyone to three minutes. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with our procedures, we have this wonderful little clock that'll start at three minutes when you give your name and address and then it goes down and it blinks at you when it's zero. So um, we ask that you um, keep an eye on that. Uh, uh, with that, um, we proceed with the agenda and we go to old business. We have the report of the Committee of the Whole meeting which was held December 10th, uh, 2012, and I would call on Trustee Rosenberg. Uh, before I go ahead with this, just a point of clarification. So us uh, approving this motion tonight will still mean that it will come before the board after notification of the residents, correct? Yes. Be in ordinance, sir. Yes. Yes. And that will be sometime in the future after notification. It'll be both after notification to the residents and the ordinance wouldn't come back anyhow till the Frontier Park project was through Plan Commission. Mr. Dixon, do you want to just give a brief overview of what uh, the subject matter is with the Herald Street? Yes, this pertains to a small, small portion of land that in many ways appears to be part of Frontier Park, but at this point is not. It's a, uh, uh, a dedicated street uh, stub. And uh, as part of the redevelopment and upgrade of Frontier Park, the uh, planning department, coupled with the park district staff, felt that it would be wise to clearly make this part of the park. So the village has been asked to relinquish ownership uh, for no fee to the park. We typically do seek a fee on certain types of vacations. Uh, but in this case, since it's going to another governmental body, we're not doing that. The board reviewed this last Monday night. Uh, while it is uh, a little bit different than our practice on matters like this, the board, I think, wisely felt that we should notify uh, neighbors who are potentially uh, affected, although I think with the current use of this property, the impact is likely to be negligible. Um, but as a procedure, the board wanted that done, and we're going to do it. So all this is tonight is a ratification of the board's direction from last Monday night. It is not final action. Okay. Uh, I would move tonight, as I did the night of December 10th, uh, that the Committee of the Whole recommend to the Village Board the vacation of the westernmost portion of Herald Street adjacent to 
Frontier Park to the Arlington Heights Park District without compensation, subject to notification of the residents. Second. Uh, motion by Trustee Rosenberg, seconded by Trustee Scaletta. Any other comments from trustees? Were there anyone in the audience on the subject? Uh, voice vote or roll call? Voice vote. On voice, this. All those in favor? Yeah, sign oh. Put over. Trustee Glasgow. Mayor, I just wanted to be on record as I'm going to be voting no because of the lack of notification to the neighbors. I realize the structure and the, the nature of the project, but I believe that we should have comported with notification of uh, the neighbors to any action that we were taking with regard to the transfer of this property. Okay. If notification were given, I would be voting yes, but I'm going to be voting no for that reason. Trustee Farwell? I just wanted to uh, piggyback on uh, uh, Trustee Glasgow's comments. Uh, last meeting, I also was the sole vote uh, against it at the time, and it was only because of the little lack of notice. And I have to say, it's it's more of a kudos to the board because uh, we've been around and long enough to know what had happened in prior vacations and in recognize of of parcels of land, and in recognizing it, realized that there was a notice uh, issue that uh, was inconsistent with prior times that we have had street, uh, street or alley vacations. So it was really because of our own experience of seeing these in prior years, and some of them were 8 and 12 years old, uh, we, we were able to pick up on it. And although uh, staff did come up with a, a, a plan to, for notification before it comes back to ordinance, uh, I still, still felt it was prudent uh, to follow uh, the letter in which uh, we've followed uh, in prior years, so that's why I, I technically voted no. However, I am in general favor of the vacation of the alley itself should the uh, uh, residents, after having noticed, don't have a problem with it. Mr. Dixon, um, I think we did ask that notification be given, or was it the decision that you didn't notify until this motion, you know, the notice went out. suggesting that they be notified? Notification has gone out. It has gone out. Yes. So the citizens have been notified. I can't predict when the mail may have arrived, but I know it's been put in the mailbox. Okay. Trustee Scaletta. If it's anything like my mail, I agree with you. <laughs> um, I would say that uh, the reason that I that I voted yes and I, I was all for um, notifying the residents that that could potentially be impacted by this is because of the spirit um, in which this motion was made and that we notify the residents and let them know of our intent. And if there is any issue with, uh, with regard to this parcel, they would come back before this board. So I'm comfortable voting yes. Any other comments? No, it's just all right. Um, why don't we do a roll call? Trustee Rosenberg? Yes. Trustee Scaletta? Yes. Trustee Breyer? Yes. Trustee Farwell? No. Trustee Glasgow? No. Trustee Hayes? Yes. Trustee Cedar? Yes. Trustee Blackwood? Yes. President Mulder? Yes. Uh, motion carries. Um, there were no other motions coming from that meeting. Uh, I believe this was, um, just for those in the audience, a very small street was going in front of all the houses. There was a space in between two of the houses, which was dubbed to be a street, and I don't know to where. Is some, is that, am I describing it correctly? No, not. You want to describe it, Robin? Yeah, it's the end of a street. The street that goes in front of the houses is still being remained in place. It's a small piece, it's a small square of property on the easternmost edge of Frontier Park, on which the pieces to the north and south of it are already owned by the, the park district. This is a square piece of property that doesn't abut any residential property. But it's near. Well, the, the street, the rest of the street abuts. There's two houses that abut those. And we, I did mail notice to those two neighbors since last week's meeting. Right, subsequent. Okay. Correct. Did you have any response from those? I just mailed it. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we now move to item B, report of the committee of the whole held immediately before this meeting this evening, December 17th. At that meeting, we had two motions. Uh, first one made um, by Trustee uh, Glasgow. Um, Trustee Glasgow? Thank you, Madam Mayor. I will move now, as I did then, to concur in the mayor's appointment of Anissa Jordan to the Housing Commission with a term ending of April 30th, 2015. Can we have a second? second. Trustee, uh, motion by Trustee Glasgow, seconded by Trustee Blackwood. Uh, any other comments at this moment? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Motion carries. 
Uh, subsequent message, um, motion was made by Trustee Scaletta. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I would move, as I did earlier this evening, to concur in the Mayor's appointment of Scott Smith to the Building Code Review Board with the term ending April 30th, 2015. Second. Uh, motion by Trustee Scaletta, seconded by Trustee Farwell. Any additional comments? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Motion carries. Uh, I'd like to invite um, our two new uh, appointees um, to be sworn in. If you please come up to uh, the mic. <coughs> I think this works. Yeah, it does work. Um, if um, you'd please uh, raise your right hand. Ladies first, if you would clearly say I and state your name. I, Anissa Jordan. And Mr. Smith, I and your name. I, Scott Smith. In unison, repeat the following. Having been appointed to the office of. Having, having been, been appointed, appointed to the, to the office, office of. of uh, Mr. Smith, Housing Commission. No. Anissa. Anissa. Mr. Smith, oh, that's right. I <laughs> Messed them up. An Anisha. Housing Commission. And your commission, Mr. Smith? Uh, building code, building code and review. Building code and review. Now in unison. In the village of Arlington Heights. In, in the, the village, village of Arlington, Arlington Heights. Heights. In the county of Cook. In the county of Cook. Do solemnly swear and affirm. Do solemnly swear and affirm. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties. And I will faithfully discharge the duties. Of this office. Of this office. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. We have no doubt you are now sworn in. And um, before I present you with uh, a signature she sheet, as well as a, a logo pen, if you could just share with the members of our audience and those uh, at home uh, a little bit about your background. Um, I have to say, um, we are very fortunate in the community of the village of Arlington Heights um, to have um, people who step forward and volunteer their time uh, to help advise this village board on special area areas uh, as in housing and when developers need to do something that will attain the same thing but maybe not quite exactly word for word for what our code is. Uh, we have experts that can give of their time and knowledge uh, to help our village staff and work with us. Um, so uh, again, Anisha, ladies first. It's, Tell us a little bit about okay. where you come from and some of your experiences. Okay. Um, again, my name is Anissa Jordan. Uh, I was originally born in Saginaw, Michigan. Uh, I attended law school here in uh, DePaul University, and I'm an assistant state's attorney with the Cook County State's Attorney's Office. I'm out of the Rolling Meadows Courthouse, which is approximately uh, 10 minutes away from here. Uh, there, are, I basically prosecute criminals and crimes against the people of the state of Illinois. Uh, before coming to the Cook County State's Attorney's Office, I had an opportunity to work uh, with several governmental agencies. One of the uh, agencies that I worked for as a consular intern was the U.S. Department of State in Honduras with the American Embassy. And the primary responsibility I had there was speaking with people, Honduran citizens who wanted to immigrate to the United States either on a permanent basis on a visitation or uh, for medical visas. One of the primary projects that I worked on while there uh, was a project with the Office of the First Lady of Honduras. Uh, they have a lot of, at the time, they had a lot of uh, children who were coming to the United States to receive medical treatment that was not available there in Honduras. And so what I was assigned to do was to look at the number of medical visas that uh, that were being issued, how many of those medical visas were for children, what kind of diseases were they uh, afflicted with, and then presented those documents to the First Lady of, Hon the Office of the First Lady of Honduras, and she used that information along with other information to, uh, 
to take to the to the Congress to the Congress in Honduras to to make a an argument that they need to build something in their own country to address those issues. Uh, another uh, uh, opportunity I had was when I was in undergrad at the University of Alabama at Birmingham, and I worked with the mayor's office that uh, there. And one of the, we had a uh, a large Hispanic community coming into the area. And so one of the things that I was assigned to do was to help them, number one, translate the city brochures into Spanish, and then secondly, help them to access city services. And uh, we usually had a monthly meeting telling them how to go about that. So um, I'm just really excited to work with the Village of Arlington Heights. Um, I said this earlier in the committee as a whole meeting, one of the most exciting things I do every day is say that I'm Anissa Jordan. I represent the people of the state of Illinois, and I'm just really excited to say that I'm going to be representing the people of the village of Arlington Heights. I'm glad to be a member of the community, and I thank you for the opportunity. Thank you very much, Anisha, and I think you're going to add a great deal to the Housing Commission um, in their efforts to make certain that um, we do everything we can um, for all types of housing and make certain that the, the community stays as balanced as it is. So congratulations, and I'll get you in just a second. Mr. Smith. Yes, thank you. Uh, again, I'm Scott Smith. Um, I spent about a decade uh, doing project management and structural engineering uh, on projects ranging from uh, the Dan Ryan reconstruction to the Deep Tuttle project. Uh, I've dealt with Illinois Department of Transportation, Chicago Department of Transportation, Park District, local municipalities, uh, worked on CTA structure, CTA stations, metro stations. Uh, and as an engineer, I was involved in a wide variety of design construction projects. I then uh, became a lawyer, and I spent about a, a decade and a half as a lawyer uh, doing primarily uh, construction law, whether it be uh, construction litigation, dispute resolution, uh, project, uh, problem projects, uh, dealing with uh, code issues from a construction standpoint, code issues from a design standpoint. Um, these are the kinds of things I've, I've dealt with on a daily basis, and I'm excited to be able to uh, take that knowledge and expand that knowledge as part of the uh, Building Code Review Board. And I hope you're as excited as I am to work with you. Well, we're certainly glad, and we do uh, appreciate your willingness to serve. It, we try to make sure we have a, a lawyer on almost every commission. Some of them have more than one, but uh, here we have two tonight, and uh, certainly want to uh, thank you um, for your service. And if you please come forward, um, I'm going to give you your uh, certificates, and I always say that um, we'll all be six feet under, but these will still be existing in the village of Arlington Heights, and I hope they'll always keep the paper, you know? They'll, pretty soon they won't know what paper is. So let me see if I can get this right. Anisha and uh, Scott. Scott. Uh, and as an extension of the village board, I'm very pleased to pre present you with a lapel pin. Please wear it uh, with pride. You are an extension of this village board and we want to congratulate you and thank you very much. In front of her, she's going to she's going to witness it. That's our clerk. Uh, so thank you very much. Um, that concludes our report of our uh, committee of the whole held this evening. So now we move to the consent agenda, and I'd like to ask if there are any trustees who wish to vote no or pass on an item. That is on the consent agenda. Uh, upon uh, any trustees' request, does anyone want to remove an item from the consent agenda? Uh, is there anyone in the audience, any citizen? Uh, for those of you in the audience, the consent agenda has a number of different motions that are contained on page four and five of the agenda. Seeing none. Um, approval of the consent agenda. Second. We have a motion by Trustee Hayes, seconded by Trustee Rosenberg for approval of the consent agenda. Roll call. Trustee Hayes? Yes. Trustee Rosenberg? Yes. Trustee Cedor? Yes. Trustee Blackwood? Yes. Trustee Breyer? Yes. Trustee Farwell? Yes. Trustee Glasgow? Yes. Trustee Scaletta? Yes. President Mulder? Yes. 
We've made it to item 12, new business on page six. Uh, and this evening uh, we have the Hickory Kensington area plan. Um, and, and this is uh, again, something I referred to earlier. Um, each of the trustees and myself have um, read through all the material that was presented to the plan commission, uh, the minutes and statements that uh, persons made at, at that meeting. Um, if you do wish to uh, speak, I do have some cards from some of you who have presented this, um, and um, we will will call you up. But first, I'm going to have staff introduce us to uh, the project. Mr. Dixon. Thank you, Mayor. This is a proposed amendment to the village's comprehensive plan. It was reviewed by the Plan Commission on November 14th of this year. Uh, the commission held a public hearing and upon uh, conclusion of the hearing uh, by a seven to zero vote recommended approval to the village board. Um, Charles Perkins, our director of planning, will have a few remarks uh, once I'm done and I'll be done momentarily. And as part of his presentation, I think he's going to clarify what this is this evening and what it is not. Uh, it is not a rezoning this evening. It is a, a proposed amendment to the comprehensive plan. Once Mr. Perkins is done, uh, Bill Enright will give us a, a quick overview of the proposed plan. Charles? And Charles, if you would include in your comments the difference of an amendment to a comprehensive plan and what we're doing tonight so that people know that nothing's getting put in stone. <laughs> Correct. Thank you, uh, Mayor and Mr. Dixon. Uh, what you have before you is a recommendation from the Planning Commission to amend the comprehensive plan. It's really a vision for how the Hickory Kensington area could redevelop over time, very much like the downtown master plan is an amendment to the comprehensive plan and a vision how the downtown could redevelop over time. Um, and, and that's really all it is. It's a policy document. Uh, it's used by plan commission, by staff and village board when developers submit applications or petitions to uh, implement the plan through rezoning and it's through those rezoning public hearing processes that uh, we require a notice to adjacent property owners and all the issues of traffic and parking and those kind of things um, you know get uh, vetted out. Um, the plan does call for some uh, implementation actions because without doing anything the plan does not get implemented and uh, Bill Enright will talk about some of those as he goes through his presentation and there are different steps along the way, all of which uh, have and involve uh, a public hearing process. And um, as part of uh, getting to this stage, uh, there have been some um, open houses where, um, or a open house where uh, the public has been invited, both property owners and those beyond, as well as the official public hearing before the Planning Commission. Uh, at this point, I'd like to turn it over to Bill Enright, who has coordinated the project and has done a you know, great job putting this uh, concept together and getting it to this stage. So, Bill? Mayor and members of the board, um, the Hickory Kensington area is bounded by Northwest Highway to the south, Minor to the north, Dryden to the east, and roughly Belmont Avenue to the west. This area had been uh, reviewed in the early 90s, and there was a redevelopment plan approved for the area with some modifications to the area which have been implemented over the years. But um, this area was really the original industrial area of the town and then as we grew in the 60s and 70s in particular new industrial areas cropped up to the north and south along the highways um, so this area is very old although it has been transitioning quite dramatically over the past six seven to ten years um, with a lot of redevelopment of the former arlington market site which is an ongoing uh, development process mariano's we're all aware of walgreens um, as well as some other smaller developments uh, one major development in the area really along hickory has been um, uh, Dana Molded Products moved um, out of town uh, last year, and they have since torn down about 68,000 square feet of, of building there. They were the largest business in the area, and uh, that's actually made quite a dramatic uh, impact on the area visually, for sure. So you have that middle core area in blue that's really been the focus of the redevelopment plan to see, um, take into context what has happened in the area, um, village goals and policies with respect to land use and housing and economic development, as well as take advantage of the proximity of this area to our downtown and the train station. Just some uh, visuals of the area, which we're all pretty familiar with. Um, this would be Kensington looking easterly, um, Northwest Highway at the corner with Kensington, 
Northwest Highway looking northwesterly. That would be Hickory looking north. Uh, some of the newer development, uh, Walgreens built several years ago at the corner of Dryden and Northwest Highway. Mariano's we're all familiar with. Um, Arlington Crossings development along Dryden. The area right now is currently designated um, along Hickory, this core area, as uh, industrial along Hickory Avenue to the north in purple um, on the east side of Hickory. Um, the remainder of this core area is designated as commercial, which is the red. Um, the Arlington Market site over here, um, the row townhouses are designated as moderate density multifamily, as is the five acre um, undeveloped parcel to the south. Um, which is accommodating, uh, you know, roughly 17 units uh, per acre um, under that uh, comprehensive plan designation. That's not, we're not proposing uh, to change that with this plan. And then along Kensington to the south is a commercial designation. The current zoning in the core area along Hickory is primarily manufacturing M2. That is the most intensive uh, zoning district that we have in the village. It is the most permissive in terms of the uses that are allowed. As I mentioned, this is the industrial area that uh, was original to the town um, over 80, 90 years ago, um, although the town even predates that. Um, and the area is, is quite old now. Most of the buildings in the area are at least 50 years old, um, anywhere from 50 to 80 years old, um, where everything around it is, is newer. Um, the uh, Arlington Market site, uh, as I mentioned, is R6, which uh, includes the row townhouses that have already been built, and then the southern portion, of, or the middle portion, which is five acres, is also zoned R6, which, like I said, that corresponds to about 17 units an acre. The long-range vision that was developed for the area was really a uh, multiple process. Charles alluded to it um, uh, a little bit earlier, but we wanted to get public input early on. And um, the Comprehensive Plan Subcommittee, which Trustee Hayes is a member of, as well as several plan commissioners, met in October of 2012. Shortly thereafter, we held an open house at the Teen Center. We wanted to go out to the community, make it easier for them to participate. Um, and we had about 50 to 60 people come to the Teen Center. We were there from five to eight, myself and two other staff planners. So it was very informal. It allowed us a chance to talk to the residents and the property owners in the area. Um, we sent out a notice to 400 persons, either businesses or property owners within the defined area and the residents around the perimeter. Um, and we had a lot of good feedback. I think that was a very productive part of the process because I think it allowed us to interact with the community, answer their questions, and give them an opportunity to really formulate good questions in anticipation of the subsequent plan commission hearing, which was held on November 14th. At that meeting, we had a lot of the citizens who did come to the open house show up to that meeting um, and ask pointed questions to the uh, plan commission and staff at that meeting. Um, and I think they were able to do so because of the open house um, and the amount of time that they were allowed to get familiar with the plan. So I think that was a very productive um, process. And then, of course, tonight with the village board meeting. The vision statement for the plan is to create a vibrant mixed-use neighborhood which complements the downtown, providing new housing and commercial opportunities in a walkable, pedestrian-friendly environment. Some of the goals, which I won't read over completely, but um, getting into, again, a walkable, vibrant neighborhood, providing access to the parks, schools, and commercial amenities in downtown, expanding on development that's happened in the area and transitioning the remainder of this core area into a mixed-use uh, residential commercial um, development, enhancing the tax base, providing new oppor housing opportunities at various income levels consistent with village policies, work with existing businesses to either main relocate within the area or find new places in industrial areas for them to relocate, eliminating blighted conditions through redevelopment, enhancing the aesthetics of the area to create a better sense of place, construct needed infrastructure improvements, primarily uh, sewers and streets, um, and to encourage sustainable development. And finally, develop an architectural vision that's unique to the area. This is just a concept plan um, that we had an architect uh, draw up for us. This is not exactly how the area would develop, but it's just an illustration to show what it might look like um, in the future. Um, and one of the key elements is reintroducing Campbell Street um, east to west from Dryden, or from Douglas, rather, all the way to Dryden. And uh, this will help create new block forms in the area and really give an identity to the area. Um, and create public spaces to have better access within the area for pedestrians and autos um, and is, is really an integral piece of the overall plan that would be implemented over time. 
any redevelopment effort like this will take a lot of time. The downtown took many years to implement. Um, one important aspect of this is funding whether or not uh, the village will um, likely need to look at the possibility of a tax increment financing district or other mechanisms for funding. Um, but TIF has been the most successful. That's what we did in our downtown, um, and we're very successful with it. But that's another process entirely. Um, some of the areas that we're looking at is developing kind of a hierarchy for future development. Where along Hickory, you would um, uh, keep it lower at three floors um, where the A is indicated on this map. And then as you go south on Hickory towards uh, Campbell Street, you would increase the height to four to five floors. And then south of the new Campbell Street, um, you would have four to five floors again, but mixed use where you'd have some commercial on the lower level fronting Kensington. All that depends on market viability, of course, and, and timing. Um, uh, but we think that uh, there could be some commercial on Kensington that could be viable. Also, the Arlington Market site, um, most of it has the middle portion here um, is undeveloped, of course. Um, we're recommending that the village look at the possibility of anywhere from three to five floors in that area, um, south of Campbell Street, keeping it one floor for the finishing off the commercial. This is just a rendering of looking at what Hickory could look like in the future with three, four, and five story buildings. The recommended comprehensive plan designation for the area in this plan is to um, do a combination of, of high density multifamily, which is this dark brown along Hickory and Douglas, um, but keeping it at four to five levels, which is consistent with the area around the downtown. Um, high density is in that range of 50 to 55 feet. Um, south of the new Campbell Street, where you have this blue, that corresponds with mixed use, where again, we're looking at four to five stories, but the mixed use nature would include um, first floor retail. Um, and then the Arlington Market, the middle portion of the site, would remain as it is today on the comprehensive plan at moderate density multifamily. We're proposing some zoning changes. Now, this would be a subsequent action if we get direction from the board to carry forward with that that would require plan commission, public hearings, and village board action. But it's recommended as a policy in this plan to pursue rezoning of the um, core area from either R6, the northern portion along Hickory, and as you go further south, R7, and then south of where Campbell Street would come in eventually, it would remain B2, which it presently is. It would also include an overlay zone where we establish new standards specific to this area. R6, R7, B2, um, those standards can fluctuate. They're solid in code. They're consistent in code, but every neighborhood's a little bit different. And what we're recommending here, for instance, is the R7, for instance, would allow 60 feet in height and code, but we would want to keep it at 55 maximum. Um, setbacks we'd want to see along Hickory anywhere from zero feet where it's mixed use to maybe 10 feet or if it's townhouses as much as 15 feet. The other aspect of an overlay zone here and we've done this concept two times in the village most recently with the Arlington down site um, at uh, Euclid and Rollwing Road as part of that Sheridan redevelopment is um, allow the existing property owners that are currently zoned M2 that might be rezoned to R7 or R6 to allow them to continue to use their buildings for um, M2 type uses with some regulations on that or restrictions to keep some of the more noxious type uses out of there. Um, although that hasn't happened much in the area, we haven't had a lot of new businesses coming there, they're pretty stable there. Um, we would want to allow that flexibility in the zoning um, because we would be suggesting rezoning the properties to residential or mixed use, um, which would restrict it um, from being developed for new development in the M2 district. Some of the recommendations of the plan are, of course, amending the comprehensive plan land use map, as I've suggested earlier, um, extending Campbell Street through, which I think is a critical component, rezoning the properties, which will also be a critical component to guide the future development of the area adopting the overlay zone as part of that specific to this area. What we want to do also is develop architectural guidelines for what these buildings might look like, as well as the streetscaping, which is the street furniture and sidewalks and so forth. We'd want to create a different identity or a unique identity to this area, not necessarily duplicate other areas of town. Evaluate funding options, as I mentioned, primarily tax increment financing. Promoting the area to developers. Reopening Campbell Street. 
one aspect is also studying the geometrics of Douglas Kensington Northwest Highway, which isn't the optimal um, uh, engineering of that intersection, which we may want to study if, if enough to redevelopment occurs in the area. And with that, I'd like to open it up to the uh, board with questions. Uh, questions from trustees, Trustee Glasgow? I just had a few. I mean, you, you gave us these documents, Mr. Dixon, two weeks ago to review um, and getting through all of them. Um, Bill, I wanted to ask you, this is solely for a policy issue, and I just wanted to emphasize that. Looking through and looking at these, um, anything, any structural changes, any land changes, any rezoning would have to come back before the board and they would have to present to us, correct? That's correct. So, the, the, and, and just to emphasize, there is no final project here that we are looking at. We're not making any final decisions to make these R6 or R7 or, or limit any, any use or structure, correct? Not with this plan, no, but you would be, if approving it, giving us direction to look at rezoning of some of the properties on Hickory. Okay, and if that were to occur, how soon would that occur if you were to have <coughs> rezoning? Um, would you have to have a developer come in and then make the <coughs> presentation first? Uh, we would not do it with a developer, at least on Hickory. Um, we would uh, uh, commence that process right away um, and have the subsequent public hearings of the plan commission and uh, to the village board. Uh, any development along Hickory, though, it, even if it's rezoned to R6 or R7, would require a plan unit development. So if and when we get developers interested in the area, um, they would have to go through independent public hearings. Um, and I've disclosed, of course, to the public, too, about uh, the Arlington market, that middle five acres. We do have a couple developers interested in the site, and anything that they would propose there would have to go through a plan new development, a zoning hearing of the plan commission, and uh, village board approval. So there's several different opportunities for neighbors to be heard and neighbors to end up giving their input into something before there was any final action, not just one meeting, but several different ones. Oh, absolutely. And in this area, and typically of any uh, significant development plan, we always uh, require the developer to meet early on and hold a neighborhood meeting with uh, even prior to the plan commission hearings. Right. The only other question I had was as to the long-term uh, plans for Campbell Street coming back through. It seems to go, and Trustee Bryan and I were looking at, at how it goes back through that lumber yard. Um, how are you proposing to do that with the private owners that are there currently? Well, it, where it's proposed to come through is not where Heller Lumber Yard is. It's um, actually um, a little bit south of there. It would bisect um, Dana Molded Products and uh, Ladoff's property where Mariano's has a lease. Okay. So really that's only going to happen at least at that end um, from Hickory to Douglas where the park is. If you have a developer ever acquire those properties um, and then you'd bring, you know, you, you could develop the north side of that with or without Heller and then the south side of where the street would come in. Um, so, but we are looking at the possibility of bringing Campbell all the way through to Dryden if a developer moves forward with any plans for the middle portion of the, the Arlington Market site. And then the center portion from Hickory to Beverly, is, there's actually village right away there now. It's just unimproved. Okay. Uh, Google Maps apparently is not as accurate as I thought, trying to figure out where these were because um, you were flipping through the slides so quickly. I wanted to go back and take a look. Um, so this is just kind of like you, the village's vision or plan for what may go into this area if we were to get the mixed-use um, interest that we hope to get. That's correct. Okay. Thank you very much, Madam Mayor. I have nothing else. Uh, Trustee Rosenberg. Um, Bill, I just want to make sure that before we decide anything tonight that we're leaving all our options open as far as, because I know in some of the materials we received there are some possible different alternatives for the site. So I just want to make sure that we're not closing the door in any of these options that could come forth as a result of somebody coming in with a grand plan as far as other than what we envision for this and by rezoning this or changing the, the way it's laid out, would it do that or are we uh, not having the foresight to think about something else besides what we have here? Well, if you approve this comprehensive plan tonight and then subsequent ordinance adoption to your next board meeting, the next step would be for staff to put forth a rezoning of the Hickory Avenue area. So the properties at front on Hickory, we'd be looking at rezoning from M2 to R6. 
uh, in this area and then from M2 to R7 in this area and then also establishing an overlay zone where the purple hash, hatch mark is. Um, so that would be a subsequent process. We're not looking at doing any rezonings as part of this plan or subsequent action um, in the Arlington Market site. That would have to be as part of a developer uh, proposal, which also requires separate public hearings. But by rezoning the Hickory site, are we closing the door on something that could be the whole area versus just part of it? No, I think what you're doing is you're better controlling the future use of land there, but you're make, if we were to rezone that area from manufacturing to R7 or R6, any new development in that area would have to comply with this plan and the zoning um, of R6 or R7, which is, which is multifamily <coughs> and not uh, manufacturing. So you would be precluding um, future manufacturing development in the area if the subsequent action to rezone the property goes forward. Um, however, as I said, with the overlay zone, we're allowing some flexibility so that the existing businesses or ex existing buildings that are M2 right now could continue to be used for M2 type uses, even if they're rezoned to strictly residential. Uh, and would there be a time frame or a period certain that they would have to potentially leave that site if they were in that district? No, um, any property there, even if it's rezoned, could continue to be used uh, as a legal non-conforming use. Now, if there was uh, uh, active nature or if there was a destructive fire or something, um, then they would have to comply with the new zoning districts or seek a variation, a land use variation to rebuild for, for commercial or manufacturing. Um, the, the issue came up of the railroad siting. Um, what would happen to that under the redistricting or the rezoning of that hickory site? Nothing because that's a private issue right now. Um, it would require um, any developer that was to develop there to uh, obtain rights to that piece of land. Um, there are uh, apparently there are easement rights for that um, by Heller Lumber. So obviously that would be a, a site development issue that have to be reconciled. And then uh, Last question for the moment. As far as the potential for the TIF that you mentioned, is that something you would see as the only way to do this, or are there other alternatives? There are alternatives, but uh, tax increment financing in the state of Illinois and many states is probably the most useful uh, tool to stimulate development and provide uh, the necessary public improvements in the area, um, which in this case would be pretty extensive. Um, sewers are pretty old there. They'd probably need to be upgraded for new development. Uh, putting in Campbell Street, that could be a combination of public and private. Um, some of the streetscape improvements that we're looking at. So um, we think that based on our experience with downtown especially and some of our other areas of town where, that we've tried to redevelop, TIF is um, the most logical approach um, that uh, generates a type of uh, revenue stream to get things done. Okay. Thank you. Trustee Farwell. I want to touch base a little bit on the Hickory, uh, the, the suggestion of rezoning Hickory now. Um, I understand by rezoning it, you're basically telling future developers or developers that might be looking at this spot as to what the village wants. Uh, doesn't the comprehensive plan, uh, by changing or amending the comprehensive plan and land use map, uh, essentially do the same thing without going through the rezoning process? Um, partially, but as you know, the comprehensive plan is just a policy document, whereas the zoning legally binds uh, the property to the, uh, the the zoning and what the permitted uses are. Um, so short of rezoning the property, um, it would be difficult for the village to um, deny any permits, for instance, to anybody who wanted to redevelop for manufacturing uses if the zoning stayed M2. Okay. All right. So it's really not to tell them you want R6 and R7. It's more to curb future development of M2. Absolutely. Okay. But also right. to promote development too. Right. Well, I mean, but they get that from the comprehensive plan. I mean, because they're not going to look just at the Hickory site. They're going to look at the whole site. They're going to look at, at the whole thing that we're reviewing this evening. So that's why I'm kind of picking apart, highlighting your first step and trying to get the true, like the full intent. It's not just we want our six, our seven in this particular area. It's more we want to deter future development of M2 in that area and divert that elsewhere. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit of both, correct. Okay. Uh, as long as we're talking about diverting M2, 
what are the other areas in Arlington Heights that uh, would be condu that zoned M2 right now? Well, we have quite a bit of M2 land, but it's primarily concentrated in, in three areas. Okay. Uh, the center part of town, the area that we're talking about, which is only about 10 acres, um, just south of, of Davis at Arthur, there's probably another 10 acres, which is also an older industrial area. And then we probably have several hundred acres, well, we do have several hundred acres at the south end of town uh, along Algonquin Road, uh, west of Arlington Heights Road and east of Arlington Heights Road, uh, right along the northwest tollway. And then we have an even larger industrial park um, at the north end of town uh, where Nokia Siemens is located, both north and south of Dundee Road between 53 and Arlington Heights Road. Okay, so essentially by, by highlighting these other areas, we're kind of telling future developers here are of, of M2 that there are more opportune, uh, more fertile areas for M2 to develop uh, by the highways, by 53 north or by, by 90 uh, uh, south. Because we have essentially an entire uh, office complex on Algonquin Road east or west of Arlington Heights Road that is essentially vacant, you know, that has similar zoning that could be retooled for M2 right by Berkey. Um, so um, I, I kind of wanted to highlight the fact that what we're, by taking these steps, these suggested steps this evening, we're really not deterring future development of M2 developments, but rather focusing them on more logical areas. That's absolutely, yeah, that's correct. Okay. All right. Nothing further right now. Thank you. Other questions or comments um, before I go to the audience? Seeing none. Um, I'm going to call on them. I, they're not numbered, so I'm, I know that Mr. Cliffon, um, John, if you would come. Um, and again, uh, three minutes uh, for your presentation. If you could clearly state your name with your address for the uh, record. John Cifone, C I F F O N E. I reside at 814 East Wing Street which is uh, part of the Arlington Crossings Townhome Association. Uh, we have several uh, homeowners here tonight uh, in, the, in the back of the room. And uh, we've uh, looked at the plan uh, at the teen center. We, we uh, saw the plan at the uh, planning commission. And uh, overall, we like the plan quite a bit, uh, but we would like a revision to the plan. And that is specifically for the section that is now uh, referred to as Arlington Market, uh, approximately five acres. The overlay that uh, Bill had shown uh, has it uh, overlay A and B. We would like uh, the B to be dropped, so it's just an overlay A. Currently, it is zoned for single-family homes, which, is, um, which has been thought out by each homeowner when they purchased the home, um, we knew that there would be the possibility someday that it could be rezoned, uh, but we didn't think it would be so quickly that we would see such a plan. So our, our basic position, and I think the rest of our homeowners uh, have the same position, is that I'd like it to remain as an overlay A only and drop the B. Thank you for your time. Thank you, John. Do you have any questions for me? No, I think you're very clear, and we've, okay, great. <laughs> we've read you. the comments. Thank you very much for representing your, your homeowners. I, I think uh, I'm very pleasantly surprised of how beautiful that that development has turned out. Um, it's always quite nice, and it certainly was an improvement over what was there. Now we'd like to clean up so you can look out your window and see something nicer. <laughs> Um, I think that's that's the plan here, but it may take, I think the, the comment was made, this overlay in this big project could take years. Um, so it's just, it's a planning thing which allows changes, which is I think something that each of the trustees are interested in to make sure that if we think something works now, but, and that's what happened with the single family homes, there's nobody that wants to build those. So they're looking for an alternative. Um, Richard Hawthorne.
Good evening. Richard Hawthorne, 24 East Wing Street. I'm neighbor to John. Same uh, issue. We have seen the plan that you presented, and we've been, it's a very appealing. The uh, issue that we have is the uh, overlay B gives the possibility of a mid-rise building, which a mid-rise increased density, increased traffic. Our concern is that with the traffic that we're already experiencing and the new roads that we have on the, uh, both Wing Street and uh, uh, the Hamlin backside, we, it's almost like a racetrack through there with people cutting through the property going to the commercial area. The last thing that we want to do is incorporate additional traffic with a mid-rise structure, which we all know increases density, and that's one thing we want to avoid. So our, our, uh, intent, our, for our purposes here, we just want to note in the minutes that we oppose overlay B, and we would like to see overlay A, which would be single family or row homes, as I understand it, townhome row homes, similar to our product now, which would have provided <coughs> a developer, you know, uh, yeah, I know. The best and highest use under overlay A. So that's all. Thank you very much. Thank you, Richard. Uh, Tony? Is it Pisoni? Uh, Passione. Passione. I just want to thank the board for their time. Uh, my name is Tony Passione. My wife and I live at 712 East Wing Street, um, the last building on the uh, western side. Um, again, I just want to equal the sentiment to my fellow uh, residents in the community that we want to drop uh, the B portion and leave it as A. Um, we talking over with my wife and um, talking to some of the other residents we do like the plan as a whole it just um, we like the B part drop we do like the idea of developing that area with some commercial use you know can walk to restaurants shopping you know just making the area look nice for us and um, for, um, I'm soon to be residents of Arlington Heights so I just want to uh, make a note of that uh, I like the plan overall but just um, drop the part B in the uh, Arlington Market section thank you Thank you, Tony. And Linda. Linda Wright. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. I'm Linda Wright, and I live at 811 East Hamlin, so kind of on the opposite side of my neighbors that have prior spoken. And I do have the same concern with the overlay B on it, um, the density, the multi-use, um, the multifamily is there's so much congestion now that I would hate to see that happen. But the other, the idea of rezoning the M2 is really nice, so thank you very much. Thank you, Linda. Um, and, and thank all the residents who are, are attending. Um, I know that the, the streets, uh, the pictures look beautiful with all the sidewalks and the trees and the artist renderings, um, but have you taken into consideration the amount of traffic that a multiple, multiple story building could produce? Not for this particular site, the Arlington Market site. Um, we have looked at the potential for the Hickory Corridor, um, but you know, any new development, as I said, um, has to go through the Plan Commission and Village Board for zoning. Um, even if we rezone the Hickory area, um, as a requirement, uh, R7 development, for instance, is, uh, has to be a PUD, so that has to go through the, uh, the process of zoning hearings and so forth. And as part of that process, um, we require traffic studies um, from the developer, and that is scrutinized by staff and the plan commission, obviously the village board, and, and the public. Um, so until we know exactly what type of project we're going to have there, um, it would be a little presumptuous to start doing traffic studies um, ourselves. We've done, run some loose numbers, but not on the Arlington Market site. Uh, was there any other residents? No other cards? Uh, okay, that concludes the uh, citizen participation. Other comments from trustees? Trustee Breyer and then Trustee Scaletta. Does staff have any comments regarding uh, the request of the residents? Well, you know, these are legitimate concerns. Obviously, A corresponds and fully the intent here of A is, is townhouse-style development, three floors, although three floors could also allow a multifamily building. Um, but I would clearly say that the intent of A would be townhouses. That's why we're saying A slash B, to allow for the opportunity for um, moderate density, uh, multifamily, possibly, um, you know, as our code requires, uh, higher density. Um, corresponding to something higher than R6, for instance, the R7. 
um, but that would be have to be evaluated as part of a, a developer proposal to us. Um, we think at staff level that we should leave the option open um, uh, for a developer to approach the village and go through the, uh, the process um, and, and to analyze it before making a decision on uh, whether or not that's appropriate for that parcel. The, well, the problem, of course, is that 10 years from now, somebody, well, hopefully this development will happen sooner, but let's say 10 years from now, somebody comes to us and says, you know, this corresponds to the master plan that you guys developed 10 years ago. And like so many other situations we've had, uh, we, we're sort of uh, certainly not locked in, but it's hard to criticize somebody that has come up with a plan that, that uh, matches the master plan. And if we're really not wedded to that density, uh, to have it show in the comprehensive plan gives a signal to developers we may not want to send. So, that would be my only comment about that. <coughs> Trustee Scalana. Thank you, Madam Mayor. When we last talked about Arlington Market, when Pulte Homes came before us, uh, as the, the overall project was approved uh, prior to me being elected to this board, which is almost six years ago, and when they came before us and asked for some, uh, some modifications to um, change that, the board agreed, and then Pulte Homes came several years later after the property um, was kind of in disarray, um, and Pulte came forward with a plan. And as we reviewed their plan, and we question Pulte Homes on the future use of the plan, um, which is now A slash B. We never talked about the B part. All we talked about was the A part. We asked questions <laughs> relating to that property, how it would be developed in the future. We never once at, this, at, the, at the board discussed whether or not we would have a five-story building uh, or five floors um, on that property. And when we approved that design, it was based on it all being um, A. And I have a real problem changing the zoning on that property to, to A slash B when all we did was talk about it always being A. We approved the plan that they came forward with. Our comments were all based on it being A. I have a real problem telling people yeah, it's really nice that you bought that property, but we're changing our mind. Um, so that's my, my first comment. The second one is is that I appreciate the proposal or the presentation that was put together. Um, however, the, the, the landscaping, the urban design and everything is like we're trying to create another downtown. I've been clear over the years that I'm done with the brick pavers. The cost to maintain them, the cost to replace them is so expensive. And for the village to continue to absorb putting in brick pavers and new developments when we have concrete throughout the entire village except for the downtown that the village is responsible for um, is not something I'm looking to continue to do. So I really have concerns of, of us uh, having more brick pavers, uh, of us uh, having high-end uh, seating areas and receptacles and lighting fixtures. Um, so I think that you're, you're on the right path, um, but we don't need it to be so upscale that it's not affordable. And that's kind of the concern that I have with the redevelopment of this area is that it can be a nice area. It just doesn't have to be top of the line. Um, those are very nice homes where, where Pulte, uh, that Pulte developed and they're not the most expensive in our town, nor do they need, or nor do they need to be. Um, so I, I'm, I'm committed to see, seeing um, where you have A slash B remain A, <laughs> and I just hope that my comments with regarding to the fixtures and the landscape um, are heard. Thank you. Other comments, Trustee Barba? In addressing the same area, uh, in looking at the Campbell Street, west of Beverly, I'm sorry, east of Beverly, uh, the f 
first floor on the south side versus three to five floors. Is that for some visual relief coming from Kensington? Well, really, it's just because floor where it says one floor, right. we want to keep that zoned B2. Uh, there's a PUD approved for a strip <coughs> retail center there, which we're hoping a developer will be reinterested in. Part of that already has been redeveloped um, with the renovation of the south part of Arlington Market that they didn't tear down, where Eros is and the subway. Um, so it would be a continuation of just the retail commercial servicing, hopefully, the neighborhood. Okay. And if I could just uh, add to what Bill said, part of the reason for having some density here is to you know, provide support for the businesses that you know we hope to see that center continue to redevelop. It hasn't because there isn't enough uh, density around there right now and the, the Arlington market hasn't completed. The other part on Arlington market is we've been struggling with the, uh, the lender to get that site cleaned up. Uh, it, it is approved with uh, a PUD right now with the 55 zero lot line single family homes, but nobody's stepping forward to build those right now and probably won't for the foreseeable future. Um, we do have uh, some limited interest on a very, very conceptual basis for some other type of development. Um, so, you know, that's why we looked at trying to be a little more flexible there. Maybe the five stories is higher than anybody would want to go. Um, but we don't know whether it should be three or four, depending upon what some developer comes forward with. Um, the rest of the plan still keeps this as R6, so the developer, would, any developer coming forward would have to seek an amendment to this plan to change that to any other higher density cate cate you know, category. Right, right. No, I understand. Uh, and, and that's, you know, part of the idea of not only having a comprehensive plan that rezones, but also have an overlay is because you are really redefining, you know, as Bill, as you uh, put forward in the uh, presentation that an overlay's idea is to uh, take an area and, and give it its own little uniqueness. Um, and there's where I do have, I do have a problem with the, the B portion. Uh, of that A B uh, between uh, Beverly and Dryden and Wing and Campbell. I also look at the infrastructure, the streets are immediately surrounding it. They're smaller streets versus where we have three to five and four to five floors of A B and B uh, around Douglas Hickory and just south of Northwest or just north of Northwest <coughs> Highway. Um, that A B piece, the streets uh, that service the long parts, uh, the long parts of that uh, particular zoning overlay, and then the westerly portion of that overlay are more narrow streets than, say, Dryden. So, although Dryden would would uh, would serve it, the other three streets are pretty small in comparison to the other A, Bs, and the Cs, and those street widths. Um, I also take you know, so I, I would be. I would not be in favor of the A slash B in this area at that time because I don't want to give uh, potential investors in, into our community the idea of the board reviewing this and saying, okay, granted they do have to come back, but we've already reviewed this overlay and we are suggesting three to five or we are putting it out there as a possibility subject to a review of some given plan. Uh, it's almost like a, a, a tacit uh, acceptance of something that high. Um, we've been in this position before where we, where we, re, we are redeveloping uh, uh, areas uh, and we have residents immediately surrounding the areas with given concerns. Uh, and in the past, uh, when we've had better times and the areas have been, have been you know, really redeveloping throughout, we take the, the residents' concerns uh, into play. Here we have a slightly unique situation in which we have the Arlington Market area uh, and the the Wing Street area, uh, where these uh, our residents here, our new residents have have invested in, and decided to make their homes, uh, I think really invested it into our community at a time where investment in the community was in, into a a development that was not complete was a let's put it on the on the table more of a gamble than it would be just buying a home next door, and I want to recognize that and to so shortly afterwards say, well, now we're going to build something three to five stories immediately adjacent to you, to the south of you, I, I think is sending the wrong signal there, especially when it hasn't been part of, and as, as uh, 
Trustee Scaletta has, has pointed out, it hasn't been part of that overall plan to begin with. Originally, years and years and years ago, the plan was flipped where the condominium building, the higher portion was against the northern part of that overall land and then the zero lots and the townhomes were weaved where basically the vacant area is now and the one strip on Dryden is now. So now we're kind of flipping it um, and flipping it on them. Um, and I, I, I wouldn't be in favor of the B portion uh, at this point in time, uh, not having seen a plan. Um, so I would, I would not like the, the B port. I would say just make that A because there's certainly other areas here. We have two other A, B areas and we have two C areas. So we certainly are increasing the density to, uh, to a point where I think it should be able to satisfy uh, the uh, completion of the development of the commercial space on the first floor. Uh, Trustee Scaletta, then Trustee Glasgow. A couple follow-up questions. The first one is, with the change in uh, the zoning more than the comprehensive plan, because that would be the next step, what are we doing to the value of those properties in that area? Well, you know, you're probably enhancing it along Hickory um, if there's a market for it. Mm -hmm. Okay, I mean... Trustee Scaletta, we met with uh, some of the major property owners besides the process that Bill mentioned, uh, Dan Hitting, Heller, um, Mariano's, Ladoff. Um, and when we met with Dan Hitting, he, his opinion was that his site was, was not of contemporary manufacturing dimensions as far as depth and location, and that he felt it w would help his value the the plan with along the lines of what we're presenting tonight that's just that's just one you know property owner and his comments that he made to us when we met with him and, and uh, he owns the property at the corner of uh, uh, Hickory and Kensington uh, it's just um, had the buildings and the structures demolished okay and and I would assume that that it would they would increase in value I just want to make sure that we're not going backwards on anyone, um, as, I, as I don't want to go through this process and then someone come to us and say, you know, what have you done to me? Um, if, if Campbell did go through, how does it impact the parking lot of Beverly Lanes? Well, uh, a portion of their parking that they're using, it's hard to tell exactly where the line is, but it appears that they are using public right away for a small portion, so, but the village has allowed it just over time. Um, but it would reduce a little bit of their parking. And that's something we'd have to work with on any development in this area, you know, uh, the existing businesses and how to accommodate them. And, you know, nothing's probably going to happen in there unless we have development um, on, you know, both the north and south sides of that segment that we do own. Um, so unless the village acquires more right away in there, it's only 50 feet right now and width, we'd need about 16 more feet. So really that portion probably won't come in until you know, something happens in that little segment of the area. Sure. Um, and, and I can appreciate the, the comments about um, trying to increase the density. It would also support um, commercial property there. Uh, however, uh, two comments. Number one, I, I'd like to have the density without um, negatively impacting the neighborhood. But also, I, I think that we have a very different traffic pattern now than we had five years ago, 10 years ago, um, with Mariano's uh, opening, and also the Walgreens being located there. Um, I, when I go to Mariano's, I go down Kensington, I turn into the parking lot, and when I leave, I go out on the Northwest Highway. So I, I, I think that, that the amount of traffic that flows through that area um, will also help to sustain those, those businesses that would possibly open on the, the B2 um, lots and I had one other question give me one second I have no further questions sorry Christy Glasgow well I understand and I respect my colleagues opinions trustee Scoletta and trustee Forwell um, and I also respect the opinions of the people here um, there are several things that I can see 
with regard to the use of an A and a B. Um, Section A, <clears throat> Pulte did come before us and ask for single family homes, but with no real developer in the foreseeable future, depending on the plan, I can see something, and this is based upon something that our mayor told me years ago, that when people come to Arlington Heights, they end up moving into smaller homes, and then they move into bigger homes to have their family, and then they want to stay in Arlington Heights, and they want to be in Arlington Heights when they're older, and sometimes they can't afford it. If there were some kind of proposal that was put forth for a multi four unit that was in that area <clears throat> next to yours that, that had a uh, subsidized place for seniors, um, and we've been talking about housing uh, commissioners and, and affordable housing this evening, and we talked about that at the Committee of the Whole this evening, that's something we want to do to be able to keep our residents here in the village of Arlington Heights. And the traffic pattern and what is located there now with Mariano's, with the Dutton House, with, you know, cleaners, et cetera, being right there within walking distance in Walgreens, it makes for a perfect plan for that. <clears throat> I can't discount B entirely. I mean, I understand why you want just A, and I understand your rationale. Um, and I, I appreciate you coming out tonight, and I, I respect what you're saying. If the wrong program came before me, the wrong development, I don't know whether or not I'd vote for it, but I don't want to preclude it right this at this moment because I think that would be uh, a little bit premature on behalf of this board. Um, we need to be open to new ideas, and those new ideas may include things that are beneficial to you once you see them. Um, I'm not saying I'm going to approve anything of this nature, but I'm just saying that's something I could foresee that would work and be a nice transitionary uh, thing between an A and a B. Um, so with that being said, I'm, I don't want to foreclose uh, A and B, and I make a motion to approve uh, this as presented to the, the commission. Trustee Hayes. I'm going to second the motion uh, with comment that I would agree with Trustee Glasgow's comments. I, I would just like to see us keep our options open, noting that uh, we will be able to evaluate any proposal that comes before us with full public comment at that time. So. Um, I, I do think we need to keep our options open, so I would second the motion. Um, thank you. We have a motion and a second. Uh, my, my question, though, is um, my concern on where single family were proposed. I think there was like almost three levels. Um, they were zero lot line and, and, and very unique. But... Uh, From what I've heard, that's not a desirable thing that a builder wants to do. They don't think it's marketable. And the types of housing continually change, not every month or every year, but probably every decade. And developers certainly want to have a marketable product. So as time changes, that changes. I've also seen it a lot easier when someone comes in and wants something a little bit higher than maybe we've approved in a general thing, it's a lot easier to move that way as opposed to having a height that we really don't feel fits, but it's in the plan. And it's a little more difficult to tell a developer, well, no, you can't do that, or if we don't feel that it fits. So I'm, I'm a little bit concerned about saying that we <clears throat> could have a, a five-story building there, you know, three, three and a half, four. It's more in fitting. I, I, I can't visualize it. And I know this is a conceptual plan, and you want to attract developers to come and look at it. Um, I think this area looks like uh, could be very exciting, and I like the fact that the streetscaping that you're projecting would be a very walkable community, and I would echo Trustee Glasgow's uh, that it might be with senior housing just to the north of that. Um, and a lot of our seniors live there. Um, that it it would some other retail would would really make it a, a nice place to live. Um, um, but I, I I just don't know what what is the sense of the staff. I mean, can can you say it up to five and then? Somebody come in and you say, well, I'm sorry, we can only do four? 
Well, yeah, I think we could um, because the the plan uh, states in some of the other slides the R6 zoning. The plan for this particular area does not say rezone to R7, but on this kind of height blocking, it allows that flexibility. So I think to get to uh, four or five stories, if a developer did submit that plan, they would be asking to rezone to R7 which would need an amendment to the comprehensive plan. So even though they may be able to point to the height, they couldn't point to the, the zoning classification in here. Um, so, you know, I think that gives some checks and balances there. Um, you know, the, the minutes of this meeting will reflect the, the flavor of the board as well. Uh, if you wanted to add a footnote on this exhibit, you know, that, you know, there's some concerns about going up to five stories, you could do that, or you could even change the five to four um, uh, and still leave it at AB but have the height read three to four stories. So I think there's a couple options that could be considered there. It's been a few years but I still recall some of the uh, apartment buildings just east of Arlington Heights Road and, and some of the differences there and when you talk about floors, um, ceiling heights have changed. <laughs> so um, what what used to be so many feet, um, and you call it floors or feet, I think maybe feet is a little more um, important to keep in mind. Um, you know, a four-story building can be as tall as a five-story building. So, um, you know, I just hope that we have the flexibility you're indicating that we do have. Trustee Cedar? Yeah, thank you, Mayor Mulder. Um, well, I like I like the concept of creating a neighborhood in that area. I, that's what I would call it, a, a unique neighborhood, I, and I like that idea. Um, and since John Scott is my mom's favorite trustee, I want to concur with him about the brick pavers. I have to agree with him every so often, <laughs> just for mom. Uh, I'm not fond of brick pavers, it's just for the record. Uh, the other issue that I, I think regarding tonight is, and echoing the, what the mayor just said, it, it might be, you know, th this is like the first domino to fall in this you know, uh, proposed developmental area. And I think if we go with the A, B portion here, it's harder to go backwards than it is to go forward and allow up. So I'm, I'm conceptually thinking here we allow this and then we have some developer all excited coming before us in the future. And we're like, you know what? We said five stories, but we're gonna go four. You know, we have the uh, perception then of being anti-development, tough to work with, all the things that you know we don't want to be. I'd rather have a. I'd rather look like the mayor said to keep it at four. Go up if, if we need to. If something's proposed to us that's definitive and looks nice and uh, is acceptable, versus going backwards or, or saying no at the time. Um, that's just my two cents on this issue. Thank you, Mayor. Trustee Rosenberg. Oh, I thought I saw your hand. Anyone else? Trustee Scaletta. Charles or Bill. Have we ever had a developer come to us and ask us to change the zoning on a piece of property so that they might be able to build a larger development height? Yes. So if it's remained A and someone read our minutes or said, well, hey, you know, on your comprehensive plan, you show three to five floors over here and we'd like to put something forward, you would gladly accept it, wouldn't you? I mean, that, that's happened many occasions. I think the, the challenge uh, relates to some of the comments I think you said, uh, or somebody said earlier that, you know, homeowners, you know, bought into a plan and then we're changing the plan. So even though what happened on Arlington Market was market driven, um, you know, the market didn't accept what was originally approved um, and the original developer lost it back to the lender now we're trying to retool that site. Um, that's why we thought, you know, show the flexibility here so anybody looking at this plan in the future, you know, understands the range. But I understand what everybody's concerns are, uh, and that's why I suggested, you know, even take changing the five to four, I think, is still a workable plan. We will still work with those neighbors when, if and when we get a developer interested and try to come up with a plan that makes sense for that area that's marketable. Um, and you know it's financeable for the for the developer. And right now it's not a, it's not a great time for new builds and residential. We're seeing more 
of transitions of condo buildings into apartments or or actually you know even apartment buildings changing hands right now because um, rentals seem to be the the trend that's most successful these days correct we're seeing interest for um, rental apartments uh, we're seeing some interest for um, senior type housing assisted living that things of that nature which often are difficult to do in a three-story um, concept well okay and my, my last question and I promise I'll be done we have two other areas in this same overlay um, where the developments are three to five floors or four to five I mean se senior housing could be built on any of those pieces or parcels couldn't they correct backing right up to a beautiful park that's correct okay I have no further questions anyone have any more questions trustee Blackwood and after listening to my fellow trustees and the residents that came this evening, I, I keep going back to what Charles and Bill were talking about, and that is creating enough density to support <coughs> the commercial side of this. And it looks to me as though um, the plan, the way that it's presented with the overlay right now, does that. And the AB for um, the Arlington Market parcel I guess the question that I have, Charles, and I'll send this to you, is that if that was just restricted to an A, the rest of the parcels, the A, Bs, and even going as far as the Cs, do you feel that there would be enough potential for density to support any um, development going further for mixed use or expanding even the Arlington Market parcel uh, commercial aspect of it? If you just left it A, or do you feel that you want you still feel that the uh, flexibility for A B in the Arlington market is necessary? Well, I, I feel if the board um, eliminated the A from the Arlington market, I mean the B from the Arlington market site, um, we would we still believe that the other densities and and height parameters on the other blocks are appropriate. So I, I wouldn't you know eliminate B and try to go higher on some of the others. And it's still consistent with height qualifications and transitioning down towards the residential areas that would make it reasonably acceptable to um, the surrounding neighbors. That's correct. If I could just add briefly, though, to remind you that the property is zoned R6 right now. Mm -hmm. R6 allows 40 feet in height. Now, depending upon the type of project, you know, condominium, you probably can't get four stories in 40 feet anymore. But apartment style, you could. So the current zoning does allow for the potential for four-story building under the current zoning. Of course, anything would require a PUD here other than the zero lot lines that were previously approved. Any other questions? Any other questions? Um, any other comments from staff? Trustee uh, Farwell. Just I, I just kind of want to readdress very briefly. So if we do just, just hypothetically, let's say we just put A, you know, that three to five area that we're talking about, the A to B, mm -hmm. and just make that A. It's not a, a, a signal really to the developer that they can only go three. They can, you know, they will have the minutes of this meeting, the minutes of the prior meetings, the proposed, and then whatever we would have uh, recommended and, and whatever would have been passed and should it be passed that it would be A. It sounds as though if I were a developer, I'd say, well, yeah, but if I'm, if I'm developing a piece of land and I need it, you know, four stories, I'm going to go and I'm going to push, I'm going to try to get the four stories. Having looked at the notes and having heard the sentiment, you know, the varying sentiment of the board and, and, and the populace, and I'd say, well, you know what, I might get it. Um, whereas if we say, well, you know, three to five right now, we're basically giving them, like I had called it before, a tacit approval. Uh, even though we have to come back for some possible rezoning up to R7 if they're trying to go to the 5. Um, so, it, I mean, to me it's, it's, a, it's a question of what are we really, what's the message we're sending this evening? And, and like Trustee Cedar said, you know, you don't want to seem unreasonable at the time the developer comes in when what they're proposing falls within the parameters that we have f set forth in the overlay. It's just that we don't necessarily like it or it's uh, not as friendly to uh, our new residents immediately to the north 
uh, that bought under an entirely different plan. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm still going back and forth. I, I just have a problem with saying five stories right there mm -hmm. um, on that A, B section. Um, I understand, you know, I'm very pro-development. I think it's, it's a fantastic idea. We all understand the, the formula where, the, where if you have an area like this and you want to, to increase density, you want to increase affordability, and that will bring vibrance back into the neighborhood. We get that. But it's a question of what does it do to the surrounding areas of the neighborhood too. And not that we are going to vote against something in favor to the surrounding areas and that the demise of the future plight of an area that's already under plight and underdeveloped. But it is a balancing act. I think this one little block is 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 is, is part of the balance. It's it's on the scales that, that I have the issue with. I have no problem with the four to five stories, you know, all around uh, Kensington Douglas, uh, you know, Hickory on the on the west side and on the east side there. I get that. The, the streets, just looking at, at you know, should our uh, map that we have here is accurate, obviously the, the street widths are wide enough to handle something like that. And then I look over at the, the three to five story off of Wing. Is that Beverly? Yeah, Beverly and, and Campbell going east. To me, at least visually, they seem like slightly more narrow streets, and I, I get concerned about sticking a five story structure there that would be that large, you know, just in mass, not just in height, but in mass and then having it on, on the narrower streets. I think we have, narrow, we have uh, uh, neighboring communities that have attempted to go uh, higher uh, on narrow streets, and, and it has not been easy in that surrounding area. Uh, they didn't widen the street at the time they built the property up. Um, so still having a problem with the B. Okay, um, I closed the the uh, public comment, but Mr. Gorin, and you're going to have to spill your last name. Did you want to say something besides you only want A? Well, okay, please come to the microphone, and if you could give your name uh, and spell your last name, because you wrote rather thank, quickly. Thank you greatly for this opportunity. The last name is Z-E-R-A-V-I-C-A, Zeravica. I-C-A? Yeah. Hopefully you can understand my lower Alabama accent. <laughs> Um, but uh, in respect to everybody's time, just very quickly, um, I respect what Mr. Glasgow said and Mr. Hayes, but all I heard was I want options open, whereas the other gentleman that, and, and the lady that were against Plan B to be added gave facts, the width of the streets, congestion, traffic, etc. cetera. Um, in addition to uh, other people that I share... Uh, Arlington Crossings with uh, tra uh, mentioning traffic and stuff. I also want to mention that when my wife and I looked at the area before we invested, like you said, um, we wanted to understand how many students per teacher in the local schools. That will change if you go to five floors. Um, parking spaces, that will change because I have, you know, experience with living in the downtown. So from the Lady, uh, ladies and gentlemen uh, voicing our opinion on keeping only A and eliminating B, I hear the facts, and with all due respect from Mr. Hayes and Mr. Glasgow, I only heard options open, which is very good for politics, please forgive me, and getting votes of people, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, but I, I really want to stick with facts. That's why your question, Mrs. Blackwood, was awesome to ask them you know, will it sustain the local business? And then, you know, Mr. Charles said, we feel it will, the session C and uh, the, the West section. So if it will, that's a game set match, as they would say in tennis. You know, we eliminate the B in front of Darlington Crossings area, and you will get your business support. And one last point with a minute left, um, you know, in support of local businesses, we are in the area of internet and other things. So it's not really, you know, how many floors per building we have supports local business. It's also internet age, you know, I can order service or goods online. So we don't need to increase the level of floors in front of our single family homes just to, to support uh, local businesses. 
And that's why I really liked your question to them. Will eliminating A still give you sufficient support for local businesses? And you said yes, so, so that's greatly appreciated. Thank you greatly, sorry I spoke too much, but thank you greatly. Thank you, sir. Now we're closed with public comment on this subject. Um, we have a motion and a second. Any other comments? Whoops, I got some more hands. Um, we'll start with Trustee Glasgow, Trustee Breyer, and Thank Trustee you. Hayes. Quickly. Madam Mayor, uh, it just, <laughs> you know, part of this is like looking into a dark room and not knowing what's there. Uh, you're, you're guessing at what may or may not be brought forward. <clears throat> Sometimes when you look into that dark room, your biggest fears are realized, and then you get inside and you flick on the lights. It's not there. That's sort of what we're doing, dealing with here. You know, if you're talking about specifics or facts, I'm putting one variation. You know, if you wanted to put a, a five-foot-high, super-dense residential with, you know, families and everything, I may not be for that, and I may vote against that. And it's very likely that I would, and I hope that the minutes reflect that. But if you're talking about putting something that's, you know, less dense, and you're putting something where you've got a very small area that you need to have multiple floors in order to have parking <clears throat> that's required by code and we have to have certain stalls per per house or per person in order to meet the code or they have to come in and get a variation in order to develop that property the people who are sitting here may be sitting there looking at an empty field for the next 25 years and that's something that we need to consider as a board now all I'm asking for from both my fellow colleagues and from you is to keep options open. There's nothing definitive. That's why I asked the questions that I asked on the front end. This is simply something that we are going to end up giving out as a plan, as something as we would like to see X, Y, and Z as a possibility. I think it, based on the plan that you have here, you, again, you're dealing with facts. If you were to put senior housing in there that's regulated, you're going to have less cars there. You're going to have people walking back and forth to the Walgreens, walking back and forth to eat at Dunton House, going back and forth to the Marianos. Those are things that I personally would like to see, <clears throat> and I don't know whether or not that can be feasibly done because you still have to look at it, whoever develops it, even if it is a senior with affordable housing, they have to have a reasonable rate of return in order to get that for our citizens. In order to do that, putting restrictions on flight or excuse me on floors or on <clears throat> height requirements past B at this point I think would really be premature without us looking at the particulars of a project and unfortunately we don't have the facts to deal with those projects right now which is why I'm just asking that this be left open as A and B I think it's pro business I think it's pro Arlington Heights and I think it's very very pro for the seniors with regard to this type of project if it were to appear here Trustee Breyer. Uh, Charles, yeah, especially with residential com components, how much dialogue have you had with the builder community? Uh, on this particular site? Yeah. We've had uh, several developers that um, early on looked at the single family component and then chose to walk. Um, felt it wasn't, you know, feasible in, in today's market. Uh, we've had a couple of townhouse developers look at it. Um, one still looking, one chose not to pursue it. And we've had uh, somebody that looks, uh, is looking at apartments. We've had somebody that's looking at senior housing. We've actually talked to probably three or four different senior housing developers since the project stalled. Um, because that's one of the few types of developments that you know, has been built in, in this economy. So we've had that, you know, ongoing dialogue with them. But, you know, what we know is it's, it's going to take a while before that zero lot line single family component would ever get built. I wouldn't mind seeing the bees before story, so at least we have a bargaining chip. I, I don't know how hard I would come down on that. I guess I would see what the tenor of the motion is. But uh, rather than uh, full throttle, I'd really like to see the B before stories. I will also, as we talk about what's good for seniors, 
I know I've had local architects tell me they'd love to build small homes for seniors, but our code makes it too expensive. Uh, this isn't the place for that discussion this evening. Uh, but that a nice, affordable, small home would be very, uh, very enticing for seniors. And as somebody who has a wife that has mobility uh, issues and uh, uh, age coming with us, I'll tell you, she's not going to walk to the store. I don't know how many of the seniors would look at that and say, I'm going to walk two, three blocks. I will tell you that in our family, that's not realistic. I will also tell you that uh, one of the other things we look at uh, is how far you'd have to walk to your car in, in a typical three or four story building that many seniors end up buying condos in or renting in. So as, as we talk about what's good for seniors, the three or four story building may not be it. The three story townhouse certainly isn't it. Walking to the store may not be it, um, except in a, in a very congested area. I wonder if, you know, I remember my father was a merchant in Chicago. He had a small store, which you've probably heard me talk about, a men's wear store. He sold hat. His one of his big staples was hats, which would mean he'd probably go out of business today, since I don't see anybody wearing a hat. But he did sell slacks and shirts. And uh, uh, there was a, a very significant density to it that made that street work. And, and I don't know that I see that density here. That's a discussion we could have a, a, another time. One of the things you. Somebody here talked about is looking at the minutes, developers looking at the minutes. I don't know the name of 10 years from now is going to look at the minutes. They're going to look at a map. And uh, the minutes tend to be, uh, while we like to give ourselves credit for, for having the content in them, they become submerged. So uh, I'd be a lot happier with, with the B being three to four just to give us uh, uh, if somebody really wants to push us, they'll have to push us. But uh, if we decide we don't like the plan, we don't have the uh, anti-business uh, 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 tinge. Uh, you know, it's very hard. Uh, Trustee Glasgow is right. You know, we're going into this dark room, and you're holding a candle, and you don't really know what's there. If somebody would have said 35 years ago, Arlington Market, which I don't know if I'd use the word thrive, but it, it had an appliance store at one time. It had, had the later, the I think, if I remember correctly, where Polk Brothers was later became the jewel. And it had the bank, and it had two banks, and it had uh, the hardware store and a bunch of other things. If somebody said that'd be chopped up and made retail, uh, residential today, I don't think anybody would have believed you. They would have committed you. So... Why, what am I saying by that? I don't know. That, that, that nobody really <laughs> knows, knows. That means it must be going on too long. Nobody knows what the future brings for sure. But the one thing that, that outlives us is people look at the map. So I'd like to see the bees be three to four so that in the event we don't like the five that's presented, uh, we're not seen as... Uh, reneging on something that uh, would appear to have been promised if somebody came with the right plan. Okay. Trustee Glasgow. Mayor, I'd be glad to make an amendment to my motion that it being let, be being limited to four fours. I'll, I'll second the uh, amended motion with comment. And the comment is that uh, I would disagree with Trustee Breyer to the extent that I think the discussion that we have had this evening is very important to include the minutes that will be published eventually and, and accessible to developers and to the staff and future boards. Uh, I think the message is very clear and my preference is to have lower density of the A variety in the Arlington market area. Uh, and so I think that message will be clear to potential developers as they come forward for 
potential projects in that area. But I, I, again, because we don't know what, what projects might come forward, and there might be a project that's in the, the, the three to four um, floor height area that is agreeable to even the residents in the area. So I just think, again, that because we don't have a specific proposal before us, we, we should keep our options open. But I think the message is very clear that the board really prefers to have a lower density, a variety of project there. Thank you. Um, the amendment, uh, Mr. Dixon? Uh, clarification, I trust that Trustee Glasgow's comment about the four story for the B pertains only to that portion of B in the uh, Arlington Market site and not to the other B portion. That is correct, and thank you for the clarification, Mr. Dixon. It's only to the Arlington Market portion of this. That was my motion, and if the seconder will so agree. Yes. Okay. Trustee Farwell, and then hopefully we can wrap this up. We'll see. <laughs> I, I think it's a good idea. I, I think by changing uh, that particular area, and uh, uh, Trustee Glasgow, I appreciate you uh, uh, changing that, and Trustee Hayes, because I, I, I don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater on this, because it is an area that does need redevelopment. Um, so I don't want to vote no just on this one, you know, on the entire thing just because of this one area. But I think I want to really make it certain that whatever developer comes has to be very sensitive very sensitive to the issues of our property holders immediately to the north that have already invested in this area prior to all this. It's a little bit different than other infill developments we've had in the past. Um, and if they weren't too clear on it, I think a, a reading of the minutes and by stating that, you know, blankly that they need to be very sensitive to these property owners, there'll be little room for interpretation. So. Any other final comments? Anything more from staff? We have a motion and a second. Roll call, please. Trustee Glasgow. Yes. Trustee Hayes. Yes. Trustee Scaletta. No. Trustee Cedor. Yes. Trustee Blackwood. No. Trustee Breyer. Yes. Trustee Farwell. Yes. Trustee Rosenberg. No. President Mulder. Yes. Three. There were three no's. Motion passes. Motion passes. Uh, for those of uh, the interested parties who wanted it, even a three floor, that's still a potential because this is still a model. And we'll go through that. It's a recommendation. Uh, Plans in the mic, are not Jack. Enforceable. We can't hear you. Say so the comprehensive plan is just a recommendation it is not a legally binding matter. Any specific project has to go through all the customary public hearings, separate ordinances, so that a comprehensive plan is a guide. Thank you, our illustrious attorney here. Um, I thank the members of the audience for your patience and your coming uh, throughout and our new appointed uh, Board of uh, Building Code Review staying through the whole evening. Um, any other comments from trustees? Uh, I would just wish everyone a, a happy holiday. Uh, some have already finished um, their um, celebration of Hanukkah. Christmas is coming around the corner. And I know everybody gave up shopping tonight just to be here. So um, uh, we uh, do thank you for your, your participation in the, in the public process. And I simply thank everyone for being here tonight and would entertain a motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. A motion by Trustee Farwell and seconded by Trustee Rosenberg yes. as well as Trustee Scaletta. Um, all those in favor of adjournment signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Motion carries. Thank you, everyone. Yes.